Coming up, Sean Wayne talks about the ghosts that follow him from the World Cup exit. The NRL Round 5 continues. And reports scorers and scoreline from the Lee Leopards versus Wigan Warriors match up to open round 7 of the Super League. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way in the near future. Also, if you can, please remember the my Buy Me A Coffee page. Just use the QR code and you'll be sent to the direct the page even. And if you can donate, please do. Anyway, where are we going to begin today? Well, we're going to have a look at England Rugby League as coach Sean Wayne has admitted that he has had nightmares ever since that semi-final at uh, I bet the Emirates Stadium, Arsenal's football ground. The England boss has admitted he's still tortured by England's failure to win last year's Rugby League World Cup as a three-match test series with Tonga this autumn looks likely to be the first major step to the next tournament in 2025 for his side. Defeat by Samoa in Golden Point Extra Time semi-final last November ensured the host missed out on their first World Cup final on home soil for almost 30 years. Wayne has had since extended his contract with the Rugby Football League in February, though the next tournament in France in three years, he still admits last year's it was a missed opportunity that will haunt him to this day. Wayne speaking to the press on Wednesday said I won't get over that for a long time. It really impacted me, the way we lost, and it will do for a few months yet. The competition was the best six weeks of my life, but the way we finished was so disappointing. We've analysed everything, starting with me, and it, is, it still tortures me to this day. England will play France in a mid-season test next month, but Wayne's big first test post World Cup could well be a home series against Tonga, with the RFL set to confirm a three-match service the series in the next coming weeks. Newcastle and London are potential venues for at least one of the games, as the RFL look to build on encouraging crowds in both cities during the World Cup. It said, he said about this, As far as I am as aware, it's not set in stone yet, or done yet, but it's more than likely will, it, it will happen, a bit will be happening, England coach um, said. With so many people supporting it, it is going to be better, and hopefully we're going to have more fixtures set in stone moving forward. Now looking to the future, with a large portion of England's World Cup squad over the age of 30, Wayne hinted that he will use the fixtures against France and Tonga as a chance to refresh his playing group with young stars. That could mean for call-ups for players such as St. Helens halfback Lewis Dodds and talented lead centre Harry Newman. I picked some players over 30 in the World Cup and they did a fantastic job. So it won't be com a complete clear out, but I'm looking for at players who are uh, 22 or 23. You can play a big part for us in the next World Cup. One of the players who will not be involved in the 2025 is Sam Tompkins, who captain England in the last to year's tournament. He will retire at the end of the season and Wayne refused to confirm whether Tompkins' decision meant he'd effectively retired from England duty. He did hint that the French fixture would provide an opportunity for younger players to shine. But he has too much respect for Sam, he said. He has some influence on what happens, but 2025 is far away. Plus Sam not understands that. With that all being said, April the 29th, 2023 sees England face their French counterparts at the Hallowell Jones Stadium as part of an international doubleheader in this mid-season international. 
the women's game will be kicking off the day with a 2 p.m. kickoff, while the men's followed that at 4.30 p.m. Ticket prices, if you're looking to go, are £20 for adults and 16-year-olds 16, uh, 16 and under will get in for just £10. An easy thing to do and go watch the International Rugby League. Now we continue with our build up of uh, results and scorers from round five as the NRL sees two games played in the evening or morning, depending on where you are. The two games in question sees the Canberra Raiders face the Penrith Panthers at GIO Stadium, while South City Rabbitohs will entertain the Melbourne Storm at Akko Stadium. To the first game, Raiders vs Penrith Panthers, and it sees both sides coming off losses in round 4, but the Panthers will be feeling considerably more positive about themselves than the Canberra outfit that was well below its best in Newcastle. The Premiers open their round with an epic 17 points to 16 loss to the Eels in a match that went down to the wire and beyond while the Raiders had a Sunday afternoon to forget as they gave up a 14 points to 18 halftime lead to go down 24 points to 14 to the Knights. Compounding matters for the Raiders further was the simming of 5-8 Jack Whiten for contact on uh, Jackson Hastings and the star number 6 was charged on Monday with a two game ban. The Knights had too much flair in attack and made easy meters in the second half, an issue that Raiders coach Ricky Stewart will be needing to address this week as they look to contain the potent Panthers backline. The back three of the Panthers, made up of Dylan Edwards, Sunaya Taruva and Brian Toto, ran an astonishing 872 meters between them against Parramatta. I will make Canberra pay if they are given any latitude on kick returns. In round 21 last year, the two sides clashed with Canberra and it was Isaiah Yo and Moses Leota who laid the platform for a comfortable Panthers win. Their 18th of the season from 20 games as they power towards another minor premiership. They may not look quite as formidable in 2023 without a couple of stars that have moved on, but it looks to be a matter of time before the chaps click into gear and the Raiders will need to be at their absolute best to keep them pay. So what's happened? Unfortunately, we're pummeling is what's happened to the Raiders as the Panthers came away 53 points to 12 victors. Sunay Taruva got this scoring up and running on the 6 minute as he went over for the first of two tries with Nathan Cleary kicking both goals when Taruva came over for the 24th minute try as well. On the 31st minute we saw a bit of life from the Camera Raiders as wait, Elliot Whitehead went over with, Cal, with Fogarty, Jamal Fogarty kicking over the conversion. Nathan Cleary spotted over a drop goal from uh, the 39th minute to give the Panthers a 13 points to 6 half time lead. Isaac Tago kept the 2x2 two two going as he scored on the 43rd minute and the 49th minute with Cleary only converting his first. Cleary got on the try scoring side of the chart now, after that on the 52 minutes, getting on the end of a grubber kick and a offload close to the line. Cleary converted and it was only going to be one way from there. Despite a consolation try from Hudson Young on the 56 minute, with Fogarty again converted, the Raiders were pummeled by four tries from the Penrith Panthers to close out the game. On the 52 second minute, Hoskin got his second try in two games with Cleary converting before Peachy, Crichton and Salmon all got over in the final 10 minutes with Cleary adding three more conversions for a figures of 8 from 9. The Raiders have got some work to do but the Panthers click 53 points to 12. 
The Rabbitohs honoured club legend John Sattler uh, with an emotional charged win over Manly and they look to carry that momentum into another home clash with the Melbourne Storm on round five. Led by the inspirational Cameron Murray and the mercurial Cody Walker, the Bunnies fought back from a 12 points to 6 half-time deficit to force the game into golden point, where Lachlan Ilias came of age with the first field goal of his career to win the, the game outright. The challenge out for coach Jason Dimitriou is to ensure his men harness the pride and passion that carried them to victory on Saturday night and can use it to their advantage against one of the benchmark teams of the last two decades. The Storm have gone win, loss, win, uh, sorry, win, loss, loss, win at the, to start the season and looks shaky at times, but the return of Cameron Munster has given them the fresh impetus to spring some victories together and string them together. They now have eight teams above them in the ladder feeling nervous. Craig Bellamy's men can make a huge statement, statement over the next month as they face the Rabbitohs, Roosters, Sydney, uh, Manly Seagulls and the Warriors leading into a bye round in round nine. The Storm were happy to come out of victorious, 18 points to 10 over the Rabbitohs as they scored three tries to two and were manfully adequate in their defensive displays to keep out two desperate Rabbitohs attempts to score. The scoring started on the six minutes with Josh King going over for the first try of the game which Nick Meany converted before the Rabbitohs got back on level terms with Cody Walker's try and Latrell Mitchell adding the extras. Will Warbrick gave a second try to the star midway through the first half and he was had his try added to by a conversion from Nick Kipmini. Half time scoreline of 12 points to 6 saw the Storm come out of the blocks first. Cameron Munster scored a try on the 43rd minute before Campbell Graham scored one 16 minutes later, which Mitchell weren't able to convert. That was the end of the scoring, but it wasn't at the end of the action. Nick Meany's manful defence against Alex Johnston stops the Rabbitohs winger from going over on the left edge straight after a six again call has been set out. This was seven minutes before the end, but and then a fantastic touch finding tackle by Harry Grant puts Thompson, the other winger for the Rabbitohs, into touch before he can get the ball down. So that is how the game ended. 18 points to 10. And finally, we go to the Betfred Super League as last night saw the start of round seven. And there was a battle of a brewer that needed to be sorted out. But first, let's have a look at all the fixtures for the weekend, starting with how the teams stand in the league table. Now Warrington Wolves stand top of the table with six wins from six as Catan's Dragons failed to win last time out. Wigan Warriors are in third position, two points behind with Hull KR and Sulphur Red Devils joining the Saints and Leeds Rhinos as well as Leeds Leopards on six points. Huddersfield Giants and Hull FC come next so with two wins apiece and the bottom two are Castleford Tigers with one win and Wakefield Trinity yet to get off the mark. So the first game of the weekend saw the Battle of the Borough with Lee Leopards versus Wigan Warriors. Before Friday sees two games between OKR and Leeds Rhinos, which is on Sky Sports, and St. Helens versus Wakefield Trinity. Things don't get much harder for Trinity in these games, eh? Saturday has two more games with Warrington Wolves and Hull FC being the live game on Channel 4 before Catalan's Dragons face Cath uh, Castleford Tigers in the south of France. The weekend is closed off by Sulphur Red Devils versus Huddersfield Giants. 
on Sunday. With only eight miles apart from each other, Lee Leopards face Wigan Warriors for the first time since that Lee's return to Super League. And it was played in front of a big old crowd. Wigan had made it back-to-back -back victories as they came from behind to beat the Salford last weekend, but is, there is still a lot of room for improvement moving forward. Switching Bevan French to fullback and moving Jai Field into the halves at the expense of Kate Gus had, been, had the desired effect. That could well become a permanent switch to extract more from their attack. The aforementioned Cuss, though, is now out of the squad due to injury in his neck, saying that a bulging disc. But there is still issues with Ryan Hampshire. And Ian Thornley is away on loan at Barrow after scoring his first game in his first game for Barrow and his first game back after knee ligament injuries. For the home side, though, they secured another crucial win on their return to Super League as they uh, their eye-catching start to the season continued with a win on the road against Hull FC last week. The Leopards started strongly and they got the job done on the back of just Charlie's hat-trick, but they lost Joe Shorrocks ahead of this contest with the forward recalled by the parent club, uh, Wigan Warriors, and he is in the lineup to start uh, to come off the bench against his, uh, for, his former loan club, shall we say that? There's just Joe Waddle unavailable for the uh, for the Leopards, but there's a question over Jack Hughes' involvement in the game. This game was a fantastic effort between the two sides, as apart from the Wigan's clinical finishing, Lee Leopards did their mantling, did their best bamfully to get into the Wigan's face. The tone was set with a great out of out wide try by Tom Briscoe, which was converted by Ben Reynolds, and had Joe Wardle sent to the Simbin for a late hit for on Gareth O'Brien. Gareth O'Brien didn't return to the game as he failed a HIA in that late tackle. Five minutes later, it was Bevan French who went over, dummying and speeding through the gap to score on the right cut side of the pitch. Jay Field joined him, but this time he went on the left side of the pitch, and he went over, maybe having lost the ball, but the video referee gave the try. Harry Smith converted. That was a scoring done uh, as of 21st minute for the first half. A halftime scoreline of 10 points to 6 was in the Warriors' favour. Jake Wardle, fresh from coming out in the second half and being 10 minutes refreshed, scored on the 45th minute with a well worked try on the left side of the pitch, with Abbas Mitski scoring in the left corner, diving over to score his first try of the evening. Jai Fields went over on the 58th minute. But not long after that, we wouldn't see Jai Field again for the rest of the night. Concern for Wigan Warriors. Harry Smith converted his try, but Field was on the end, but trying to get on the end of a Harry Smith kick, which he fumbled, but then reached for the right hamstring area of his right leg. Wigan closed out the game in two with two minutes to go when Harry and Toby King got on the end of a flowing move to score on the left side of the pitch as well. Then Abbas Mitski, after a beautiful kick from Harry Smith into the inside, found J um, Bevan French, who was streaming upfield and also had defenders closing on him, which saw Bevan French kick to the left corner. And Mitski, all that he needed to do was pick it up and score, and he did, with a belting conversion from Harry Smith to close out the game. The final score, 34 points to 6. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide. 
as well as clicking on that notification bell for new videos and all the content that may be coming your way in the near future. Tell me what your thoughts are on the episode in the comment section below as it's three games and the story of the England Egg Coach. A good little bit of the information for you and which result of the three stood out for you. I know the bragging rights in the uh, Wigan Get vs Lee game would mean that, that would be my personal favourite, but the Storm getting back onto winning ways and looking at the formidable outfit that they always have been with that uh, win over the Rabbitohs. It's so no coincidence that when Jacob, Justin Ollum and Cameron Munster come into the side, they perk up. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. And I'll end the episode as I always do by wishing you all the very best. So please stay safe. I'll see you in the next episode.